let's think about a hand that initially had a full loss of all the muscles innervated by the radial nerve, but now you as a therapist are beginning to see those muscles to return. If we follow the path of muscles, we know that the radial wrist extensors come back first, and then we follow the line of all the muscles as they're innervated proximally to distally. But reality is this may be a bit patchy. It may not be a total return of one muscle and then another. And we must have the skills to evaluate specifically how strong the muscles are in order to instruct the patient to exercise them. As the nerve returns, we're most concerned about wrist extensors and finger extension at the MP joint. This being the ideal posture to ask the patient to hold when you're testing for metacarpal phalangeal joint extension. You need to support the wrist and rule out the wrist so that the finger extensors are not busy trying to stabilize the wrist and extension. This, as we said, is the classic pattern of finger flexion. And during the period of time that the radial nerve is not working, the part of the human brain that directs the motor pattern of the radial nerve is being imprinted to redefine finger flexion as including wrist flexion. What we want to do as the nerve returns is not allow this repetitive patterning so that the motor cortex relearns the normal tenodesis pattern. The tenodesis pattern as the nerve is returning is allowed in a suspension design orthosis. It will occur when there are no muscles working and it will also occur when some of the muscles are working. Let's imagine that the wrist extensors on the radial aspect are returning they're easily exhausted but if the patient wears a suspension orthosis those radial wrist extensors can fire as much as they want but they're still being assisted during the time that they continue to be weak so the suspension orthosis really allows this to continue So our conclusions are that the most common radial nerve injury creates a functional loss because there's no wrist stabilization or MP joint extension. What does remain that is to the advantage of the patient is functional sensibility, all extrinsic flexors, both wrist flexors and finger flexors, and all intrinsic hand muscles including those of the thumb. Rehabilitation should keep the extrinsic flexors stretched. It should provide a functional orthosis that cre recreates the tenodesis pattern and it should support the returning muscles allowing them to function at the level of reinnervation and not exhaust them by trying to hold the weight of the hand for long periods of time. There are many orthotic designs, many options to choose from. It can be very confusing for a new therapist. But in my view, the suspension orthosis has some distinct advantages because it mimics normal motion, therefore not allowing the motor cortex to learn the uh, maladapted pattern and the suspension orthosis also reinforces muscle return. For example, with a returning wrist extensor muscle, it allows the muscle to actively participate and fire, but it doesn't demand that that weak returning muscle hold the weight of the hand for prolonged periods of time. The thumb outrigger, in my opinion, is optional, and we should evaluate the 
need for it after the orthosis is fitted to the fingers to determine whether or not the thumb lies underneath the fingers making full finger flexion mechanically impossible.